This video covers unemployment, which is an important macroeconomic indicator. Unemployment is probably a concept that you have heard frequently, especially during recessions and economic crises. Have you ever wondered how we calculate the unemployment rate? First, we need to highlight a few related concepts to understand how to calculate the unemployment rate. One of these concepts is employment, which is the number of people who have jobs, denoted as N. How about unemployment? Does it refer to those who do not have jobs? That might not be very accurate. Why? Because there could be some people who choose not to work or cannot work. For example, in addition to children uh, below working age, many groups are not available for work, such as in institutionalized individuals in prison or elsewhere. By definition, these groups are not available for work, and therefore we cannot count them as unemployed. Besides, some individuals who can work might not be actively looking for jobs, either because they do not need a job or have given up looking for one. So it is essential to meet all these three conditions to be counted as unemployed. Available for work, actively seeking a job, but cannot find a job. Let's denote unemployment as capital U. The next concept we should learn about is the labor force, which is the sum of the employed individuals and the unemployed individuals. In other words, the labor force L equals N plus U. When calculating the labor force, we exclude people who are outside the working age group, say below 16 and over 65, and those who are not available for work. Let's now look at how we calculate the unemployment rate denoted as small letter U. The unemployment rate is the ratio of the number of unemployed individuals to the number of people in the labor force, or U, divided by L. A relevant concept is discouraged workers, which refers to people who do not have a job, but they will take a job if offered one. However, they have given up looking for work, so they are no longer part of the labor force. Another related concept is the labor force participation rate, which refers to the ratio of the labor force to the total population of working age. In other words, it is the percentage of the eligible population in the labor force, such as anyone 16 years of age or older who is not institutionalized, for example, not in prison or the military. It is essential to understand these key concepts to understand unemployment. These concepts are employment, unemployment, labor force, unemployment rate, discouraged workers, and labor force participation rate. How do we collect data to calculate the unemployment rate? It is usually the case that unemployment statistics are collected through extensive household surveys including several questions on job status. For example, they ask individuals whether they have a job or not and whether they have been looking for a job and for how long. An individual of working age is unemployed if they do not have a job and have been actively looking for one for the last four weeks. This period may be different according to various definitions of unemployment in other countries. This household survey is known as the Current Population Survey, CPS, and they interview 16,000 households in the United States every month. The unemployment rate in the U.S. is calculated based on the monthly CPS survey data. A similar household survey in the UK is called the Labour Force Survey, LFS, which includes quarterly data for 37,000 households. You could learn more about the UK LFS by clicking on this link on the slide. 
such large surveys help calculate the unemployment rate. Remember, if an individual does not have a job and is not looking for one, that individual will not be counted in the labor force. Discourage workers who have given up looking for a job and voluntarily unemployed people are not part of the labor force. Hopefully now we are familiar with these concepts related to our study of unemployment. Our next question could be, why do we care about the unemployment rate? Let me move on to talk about the effects of unemployment on individuals and society. The most valuable resource in a nation is its human capital defined by the quantity and quality of its labor force. Clearly, unemployment is a waste of such a valuable resource. We know that resources are scarce, which requires seeking an optimal allocation of these resources. A high unemployment rate indicates too many un unemployed people, which would not serve our objective of optimal resource allocation. Unemployment has negative impacts on individuals and the economy. Therefore, a high unemployment rate signals that the economy is not using its resources efficiently and it is a loss of national output. However, a shallow unemployment rate or a very low unemployment rate could imply that the economy is running into a labor shortage. For individuals, unemployment represents a loss of income and a decline in their living standards. Such effects would also have severe implications on unemployed people's overall welfare, especially those who remain unemployed for long periods. There are also substantial social costs for unemployment, as research findings show its association with poverty, widening inequalities, increased divorce rates, high crime rates, worsening health and lower life expectancy. That's why policymakers need to monitor the unemployment rate closely. Let's now see an example of unemployment using real data. This graph shows the unemployment rate in the US from 1960 to 2014. Notice how the unemployment rate fluctuates between 3% during good times or expansions, and 10% during recessions. You can also see how the effect of the global financial crisis on unemployment is noticeable, where the unemployment rate reached 10% in 2010, the highest since the early 1980s. This graph is an example of a study that examines the correlation between life satisfaction and unemployment. The diagram depicts the life satisfaction index on the vertical axis and the time after being unemployed on the horizontal axis. This line shows the average life satisfaction for those who were unemployed for one year and employed in the four years before and four years after. Year zero is the year of unemployment. This plot suggests that becoming unemployed leads to a large decrease in happiness. It also indicates that happiness does not fully recover even four years after the unemployment spell. The findings also imply that unemployment may do some permanent damage either because of the experience of unemployment itself or because the new job is not as satisfying as the old one. One final point before concluding this video is the relationship between output and unemployment. In good times, when output growth is high, unemployment will decrease. Arthur Oaken, an economist and advisor to the US President John Kennedy, in the 1960s was first to examine the GDP unemployment relationship. For that reason, this empirical regularity or observation is known as Oaken's Law. This figure shows a scatter plot of the change in the unemployment rate against the output growth rate for the United States. It suggests that higher output growth leads to a decrease in unemployment. So, 
if the GDP growth is high enough, it will lead to decreasing unemployment. The fitted line crosses the horizontal axis when output growth is roughly equal to 3%, means that it takes a growth rate of 3% to keep unemployment constant. Why is that? Because as population increases, labor force increases too, and therefore we need employment to grow over time to maintain the unemployment rate constant. To conclude this video, we have covered unemployment, which is one of the key macroeconomic indicators. We learned about key concepts, including employment, unemployment, labor force, unemployment rate, discouraged workers, and labor force participation rate. We also discussed how we use household surveys to collect unemployment data and calculate the unemployment rate. Two more points covered by this video are the negative effects of unemployment on individuals and the economy, as well as the relationship between output growth and unemployment, known as Okan's law. That's all for this video. See you in the next video.